they doubled the payout this year for the Comcast Business Top Ten, which people don't even probably don't even know what that is. It's basically yeah, Scotty. What the Scotty fuck got is that? Play presented by Barstool Sports. It's playoff time, and um, Trent Daddy's back. Trent Daddy's back, sipping from his coffee mug. How are you, Trent? I'm great. Uh, it's great to see you guys. Uh, it's great to be back. I spent about a week in Florida. I got so sunburnt that you wouldn't even believe it. My body has exploded and is peeling, but it was a great time. It was. I thought the trip was going to get ruined by Hurricane Debbie. The whole time I was looking at the forecast, and I was like. The only even Brendan Jones was texting me. He's like, the only week in like Florida, the last ten years that you're gonna be, it's gonna be raining for seven days straight is when you're gonna be there for vacation. Luckily, it cleared out fast and it only rained a couple of times. Um, but yeah, it was great. It's great to be back. It's great to see your smiling faces. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got on it. I had a buddy who actually played in the Monday Barstool Classic, who at pretty much the same time you were there, he was in Myrtle Beach for a family Ooh. vacation and i think he said they got like 10 inches of rain and pretty much didn't leave their rental for the entire trip he had all kinds of golf lined up and a hurricane was just hovering over there myrtle beach for the entire time so <laughs> you got luckier than he did yeah you can't plan for it you just you know you you book a trip and you're like hopefully it works out usually it does every time i look down in florida just like randomly at their forecast i was in the jupiter area and it's sunny, and especially this time of year, it's like 90 degrees. It was really, really hot, but that was okay. It, it had a pool. So I basically just lived in the pool for like a week, and it was amazing. So is this was this a, a proper vacation, or was this because we've, we've, you've been making noises about Florida for a long time. Was this a bit of a <laughs> scouting mission? It was both. Wow. It was Trent's, both. Trent's considering moving to Florida. If that's, I am considering if that's moving new. to Florida. You want you want to you want to Florida? That's not an yeah. uncommon move. People, people <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's I I just feel like I don't know. I we probably haven't even talked about it on the show, but I have been thinking about moving down there. My lease is up in a couple of months. I currently live in New York City, which I love. This is not a like I've told people that I I might be moving, and they're like, oh yeah, you're getting out of the city. That place sucks, and that's not how I feel. Like I genuinely love New York City. I, I'm a kid from Iowa who moved here eight years ago. And people are like, wow, there's going to be an adjustment. And there was. But then once I got into it and I've been living in Manhattan for so long now, I genuinely love it. I live in the West Village. It's a very cool neighborhood. It's beautiful. It's I, I really don't mind New York City. And I, I'm going to be sad if I do end up leaving it. But Florida is pretty sweet. And the weather is really nice all the time. Like when I was down there just for this vacation, it was, quote unquote, when people leave because it's the summer. And it's really hot. I know Riggs knows that living in Arizona where like the summer months are actually the worst because it's so hot. But when I was down there, it was like 90 degrees, which was really hot, but I still enjoyed it. So if the rest of the year is nice, like from October to basically May is really nice, then I'm in. And, you know, I just as, as a part of the golf brand, golf podcast, making a lot of golf videos, Florida makes a lot more sense than the West Village of Manhattan, just in terms of logistics and like if i want to go play golf it's a full day i got to get on a train i got to go out to long island i got to go to new jersey and i leave at eight in the morning and i get back at eight at night and it's just not really conducive to a to a golf video maker i would say you know brendan jones would follow you down there in a heartbeat i think maybe because he he lived down there for a while he's been a bit he's been like my um my liaison he knows people down there he knows the areas he's been giving me advice but Nothing set in stone, but it's it's certainly something I've been seriously thinking about. And yeah, while I was down there during my vacation, I went out and scouted a couple of spots. So if I do make my way down there, somebody hit me up and we can play a ton of golf. For a uh, you know, for a bit of a homebody, Trent, you you're kind of a you're pretty adventurous when it comes to your where you reside. You know, you, you moved to New York from Iowa, then you moved out to Long Island, and then back to Manhattan, and then maybe you're considering Florida. At one point, we were sitting on a lake in charlotte and you were like i'll fucking move to charlotte i'll move to charlotte tomorrow i do every place that we go that i like like even a little bit i'm like i could move here and a lake i could definitely move somewhere where there's a lake i'm a lake person being from the midwest i've been going to lakes my whole life um yeah you know it's I, basically kind of what it boils down to too is we travel so much now especially now with the classics humming and we go film videos and stuff it's basically where do you want to go when you're not traveling and again i love new york city but if I could go and be like five minutes from a beach when I'm not traveling, 
that also sounds pretty sweet. So that was that was my biggest thing for for I mean uh, among just wanting to come home and friends was like I just remember getting back from these trips and landing in New York City and it was the opposite of like a calming experience. Yes. It was like now the battle starts. Now now I got to now I got to get a cab that's going to be $127 oh. and there's going to be a crackhead outside my fucking outside my apartment door and uh yeah it's just it's just it a little true. bit quiet. Like when I land I land at LaGuardia and I'm like getting back not from this last trip because the last trip was great and very relaxing and i was like all right let's get back into it but when i'm coming from a trip where we just filmed we've been traveling it's non-stop and then i land and even just the uber like area well, that's, at, that's the real at, fuck you dude there are people they gave they gave those people whistles they're like moving people along and it's like jesus christ like it's it's really something to come back to but then once i'm here and i'm in my apartment like i said it's great and i i do genuinely love new york city but it would probably be a little sweeter and it would honestly make more sense for me if i were in a place where you can golf 12 years or 12 months a year and you instantly get 11 percent or whatever it is 12 percent richer that might be a part of it isn't that a thing right? there's, no, oh, there's no there's no state no income, income tax, tax on there yeah it's one of those things that nobody really says or talks about like wants to talk except for dave porto i think he's very public about that he's like oh yeah i'm gonna be here for x amount of days it saves me an amazing amount of money. So I, again, you wouldn't be the first person that's moved there for the reasons. Yeah, and I, I would discussing. say on my list of things, that's probably like number eight on the list. Yeah. There's other things that I'm moving there for, but yeah, it would certainly be a nice perk. But I, again, it's just something I'm thinking about. And I mean, you, you, Dan lives in LA, Riggs lives in Scottsdale. I live in New York City. Frankie lives on Long Island. So we're all, we're all over, all over the place already. So I figure it's not, it wouldn't change anything no. in regards to the podcast or videos and stuff if anything it would make more sense for like coming down and like during like when it's november and december in new york the golf courses are closed and if frankie and i want to shoot videos or if, like you know he can fly down come see me it's it's all in the works we're just it's something i'm thinking about i even frankie who's he's the most entrenched with family and friends you know of all of us and even he said like if i could pick up and move everyone that i know and all of the network that i have to a different place that's not long on he's like i would i would probably do that but he's very entrenched in that whole thing so he doesn't really right. have the same option i left i left my family eight years ago i i'm <laughs> i'm a lone wolf and so i can i made that decision a long time ago and i'm 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 somewhat free so yeah if you see me you know at um at the lucky shuck in jupiter in the next couple of months don't be so surprised This episode is presented by Chevy. Get the crew together, head off to the course in the new 2024 Chevy Traverse. We got impressive cargo room, three row seating, and uh, they've got the standard best in class. So, of all the three row SUVs, they got the best in class 17.7 inch diagonal color touch screen. This thing's incredible. Yeah, it's not too small. It's not too big. It's a perfect size vehicle for your life. If you got stuff going on, you're going to golf, you're going to. You know, you just if you're doing a lot of things, if you're an active lifestyle, this is the vehicle you need. It's going to fit everything you need inside of it. You're going to be the guy. People are like, oh, can I throw something in there? Can I throw something in there? So you're going to be that guy because you got the best vehicle with the most space for people who do things. For a big vehicle with all the cargo space too, this thing is teched out. That's kind of what we're harping on. Yeah. That's what they're that's what they're proud of as they should be. Uh, you can do something you never been able to do on the course. You can drive hands free with available Super Cruise hands free driver technology. Uh, you don't have to leave anything behind because the redesigned Traverse offers best in class max cargo volume and seating for up to eight passengers. So head on over to Chevy.com slash Traverse to build your own and learn more. That is Chevy.com slash Traverse. Chevrolet together. Let's drive. I'll say too, I, you know, going to Florida in uh, like South Florida in August, people might shit on that or people going to Scottsdale in August. But when you're going for your, for a pure relaxing vacation, like you're going, it doesn't matter. It's actually ideal. You want it to be hot. You're just going to sit your ass outside. You probably should put on sunscreen, but in general, you're just oh. sitting there chilling, whether you're reading or listening to a podcast or not listening to anything. It, it, if you, it's a million degrees out, that's kind of what you want. You want to dip in the pool. You want to dip your feet in the ocean, on the sand. It doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees at all. I would leg legitimately just get up in the morning and get into the pool. And it was because it was so hot. The only thing about Florida that I'm nervous about and that I 
experience on this trip again. And every time I'm down there, I experience it. It's the bugs. There are some crazy bugs down here and they're everywhere. Like mm-hmm. our pool it had like, um, I don't even know what the word for it is, but it's sort of enclosed with a screen in porch all around it, all above the pool. I don't know what it's called. It's like a casita. They call that a casita. That is that, that right? That might be, that might be it. But if you look above that thing, the dragon flies and all, all these bugs are right above it. It's, Florida is a, is a bit of a Petri dish because it's swamp. It's wet. It's hot. And it's got all these things that can just appear. And, and that, that's the only downside for me. I'm, I'm a it's little like the sc- Australia of the U S it's got a little bit of that feel. It really does mm-hmm. where you can run into anything. There was a snake in our backyard, which was like, Oh, uh, this big, long black snake. And every time oh, I went out there, I was oh, very scared. But and I'm not I, a snake uh, guy. I'm more of a spider guy, but I still don't want to run into a snake. No, right. I, I'm with you. I'm not like a, I'm not petrified of snakes, but I'm not, a, I'm not welcoming snakes when I'm walking around. I'm not like hoping that they it, come into my sphere. Um, I will say I saw on, uh, on Instagram recently that the pythons down there, like this invasive species of pythons down there are a real issue. And that they're fucking up the whole ecosystem. And they've just found one that had eaten like a 10 foot, 10 foot plus long alligator. And oh. it was, and when you're taking out the head honcho in the ecosystem, you can't, they just can't have that. It fucks up the whole system. So they're right. going around trying to find and euthanize in a, but they pay people to kill them. Manner. To take these puppies, kill, to kill these motherfuckers because they're this yes. invasive species. And I've heard about invasive species of like fish that fuck up like the bass population or whatever. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's a real shame for that. But when you've got pythons that are eating crocodiles, we're starting to get into like the movie Anaconda here where things are almost comical and you just, you can't fucking have that, dude. You can't, no, you can't have Trent going out sunbathing in his pool. And it goes from a fun little black snake in the backyard to like you're fighting for your life against the python. It's a concern. It, the the wildlife down there is a concern. Like, cause yeah, I feel like it's almost fifty fifty on who runs that place. Humans or or bugs and animals. You know, like in New York City, we dominate. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're this is us. I mean, the rats are a problem. Some of them are the size of small dogs, but for kill. the most part, they get run over by train and nobody cares. We dominate. It's a hundred percent human beings dominating up here florida i feel like it's a coin flip every morning so it's something I, i'm concerned about i would rather have i feel like snake rats scare me more than snakes i'm i'm re- rodents really yeah. really fuck me up like i think there's a certain there's a certain dirtiness to to rats that that snakes don't have you know like i i that was a real problem for me in new york and and i was not like if there was a rat that was on the street i would do i would do like the three left turns so that i wouldn't have to go past them the um but then i got a an, like almost a sign when i as soon as i walked into my apartment literally on my welcome mat when i got back from florida was a cockroach this big this big and it was <laughs> it was almost a sign of like hey man i know you're scared of the insects and the wildlife down in florida this shit's everywhere <laughs> this shit shit's everywhere, man. everywhere it's, plan- dude. it's planet earth dude it's right it's earth and if anything we're the ones who aren't supposed to be here and all these animals and bugs are like wow you guys built such beautiful structures let me get in there I do I do think I'm starting to get a sense that I don't know if it's you know climate change overpopulation whatever type of warning that we've been getting for like decades it does appear that we're starting to have more encounters with creatures that could kill us and again it used to be like growing up in in Missouri you could walk outside you'd be a little bit of some rattlesnakes and stuff but like you could just run the other way it's not a big deal I'm talking like these fucking pythons that are eating alligators, these bears. I'm seeing bears all over the fucking place now. I'm watching yeah. video after video on TikTok and Instagram of bears are just going into people's pools where it's almost like, you know, I, we've had the conversation on the show before. Like, imagine what it would be like if in today's society with humans, we live just as we did, but the dinosaurs were also still out there. And you could be like playing golf and then a T-Rex could come running through the trees and just like take your buddy out in one fail swoop and he's gone. It's almost feel like we're starting to get a little bit too meshy with creatures that can just kill us. I'm I'm looking at again another one I saw is a story of like uh there was a, a couple maybe and like one of the two people of the couple just got dragged into like a lagoon by a crocodile. Ooh. I think it was in Australia and just eaten and gone. And it's like 
that's just not, I feel like that wasn't on my radar for most of my life growing up. And the more and more I'm seeing it, it's like, we're starting to get a little too meshed up with shit that could just fucking kill you. Well, there's, there's too many people. And, uh, and this, this story does not end well for the wildlife, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Like top of the food chain, you know, the, the more expansive the human, the human race gets, the less, the less room there is. But yeah, in the meantime, we're going to have to live a little bit more like impalas in, uh, in the African savanna, which I learned one of the reasons that, that they only live to like six or seven years old is because they literally can't sleep because they're, if they go to sleep, they'll just get eaten by a lion. So mm-hmm. they have to basically have one eye open and imagine how much how much shorter you would live if you just didn't sleep because you were just yeah. so so nervous about being eaten all the time. Well, it's also we are the top of the food chain. We pound our chest on that a lot, but that's only true until you encounter like a black bear and then you're not you're we're, yeah, we're civilized and, you know, we use our thumbs really well and we speak to each other. We got all these languages and it's cool, and we've accomplished a lot. We went to the moon, depending on who you ask. I know this podcast, I know it's controversial, but we went to the moon, and then, but it's like, yeah, it's cool, and we got all these cool weapons, but if you do run into a black bear and you are unarmed, you are going to die. So if you if you move to Florida, then you just need to really lean into Florida and just get an open carry and just keep a fucking gat on your belt. Really embrace the Second Amendment? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's I, what I'm talking I, about. Dude, get your ass out of New York, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's no telling what I'll be like after like six months in Florida. I'm going to be a bandana. Tan. Start rocking I'm a gonna bandana. I'm going to be wearing a bandana. I see mm-hmm. a, when you're down there, people who like I'm down there and my chest hasn't seen the sun in eight months to a year. So I'm taking my top off. I'm excited. I'm at the beach. And the people who live down there, they wear sun shirts. You like can't see. They cover every part of their body. They're like, yeah, man, the sun is fun for x amount of time but you know you're gonna get skin cancer and like you got to cover up so yeah i there's no telling what i'll be like in six months i might be a completely different person who knows palm trees are really nice you know palm trees are, yeah that's a nice thing to see that's a really nice thing to see also like i i think in the past uh, for a long time basically my whole life i wasn't really a beach guy but i don't think i ever did the beach right like we had these tommy bahama chairs or they're just like chairs that have all these pockets in them. You take like an umbrella, you take the the bags out there, you put drinks in there, you put food in there. I would always just like walk up to a beach by myself in sandals and be like, oh, wow, this is cool. But if you actually go to the beach and prepare, then it's really fun. And you can spend all day there. You can get really, really sunburned like I am. But I, I don't think I was doing the beach correctly for a long time until this time around. Beach is also nicer when you're generally a busy person. I think like when your life is busy and then you just lay on the beach, it's nice. When your life's not that busy and then you just go sit on a beach, you're like, well, this is kind of boring. But when you can just fucking chill there and you're like looking at the sky, you can hear the waves crashing. The beach is the beach is kind of growing on me. All right. Welcome back, Trent. Uh, Thank you. We got, we got news. We're wearing, we've never done this before. We got breaking news. Uh, 10 a.m. today on Thursday when the show comes out, 10 a.m. Eastern store.barstoolsports.com, we will be releasing a collaboration line that we did with the Solheim Cup. The Solheim Cup. It is the women's version of the Ryder Cup as the United States of America will be hosting against Team Europe this year. It's September 13th through the 15th. We're going to be there for a few days at least at the Robert Trent Jones Golf Club in Virginia. And we worked with our merchandise team in the Solheim Cup, and we whipped up some excellent Excellent designs. Trent's got his there. We got an eagle with the state of Virginia. I've got, but look at this bad boy. Oh, wow. That's like old school. A little vintage look. I'm acting like I haven't seen these designs before. I have, but they're amazing. Well, we do see a million designs, and we kind of we forget do. about them. And then when we see them in person, we're like, oh, shit. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that thing is um, sweet. That thing's really sweet. So supporting the Solheim Cup, the women's game, we just talked in the last show, me and Dan, for a while about Lydia Ko and how cool the – um the gold medal was for her. She's since kind of come out and kind of uh, stifled some of the rumors that she was maybe going to retire, which I love to see. But we talked about how awesome that was for her. Solheim Cup has delivered for years. It's brought forth a lot of characters. It's a handful of characters on the European side. Um, the U.S. team, obviously, we're going to have Nelly. We're going to have some complete badasses. So it's just going to be very, very fun. I've never been to a Solheim Cup before. Uh, I'm excited to, to get to it and check it out for the first time. And we've got merchandise. So. Support the Solheim Cup. Get some really cool gear. Uh, that's coming out on our store at 10 a.m. Eastern today. So as you're listening to this show, so go check that stuff out. We got a new merchandise drop. And then 
we're also going to have President's Cup gear, and we're going to be at the President's yeah. Cup. So the two team events this year, we harp a lot about the team events. Another big discussion the last couple of weeks, all about team events, team, team, team. Uh, we're going to be at those two events. We're going to be selling merchandise, selling gear, and uh, people should be fired up about it. Yeah, this stuff is great. I, I've got a bunch of T-shirts. This thing, it's those very comfortable T-shirts that we sell. They're the, um, they're the comfort colors. I love these. These fit me perfectly. I, it's really, yeah, it's great stuff. Excited to be involved at these events. And yeah, we'll be there. So if you're going out to them, we're selling it in the tent and we're selling this stuff online for the Solheim Cup. So it'll be in both places. But if you come to the Solheim Cup, come see us and hang out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Um, we got a little bit of golf to talk. It is the beginning of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Uh, we've had a few, you know, a few comments have come out this week that I found kind of uh, interesting. I saw that uh, this is kind of a, you know, we thought this debate was maybe put to rest, but I saw that uh, Victor Hovland, who I love Victor Hovland. He's actually just, I think, one of the more likable guys. Never really heard anybody say anything negative about Victor Hovland. He, at this time last year, is when he went red hot. He was the best player on earth. Um, he was pretty much unstoppable. He went to the uh, Ryder Cup. I think the very first hole of his entire Ryder Cup experience last year, he holed out like an insane chip as a guy that was considered a horrible chipper of the ball, and he was on top of the world. This year, outside of pretty much the PGA Championship, where he said he almost like withdrew because he was playing so badly, he almost won the tournament. Outside of that, he's pretty much had a bad year. He was very obvious, or um, I'm sorry, very honest about that. He had a great quote that I liked where he said, I mean, it's just not that fun to play golf when you don't know where the ball is going. That spoke to me. I think that speaks to all of us. We've all been there. Everybody that's ever played the game of golf totally understands that. You're out there. You're trying to have fun, good attitude. We can got to get away with it. We're having drinks. We're out there for more of the social experiment uh, experience. I imagine when you're a professional golfer and that you're you're only out there really to play good golf and try to to win and compete, that's got to be even even way, way, way less fun. But that's about his own game. When it came to he was pressed by a reporter, which is a good question, if he would rather have Scotty Scheffler's year which is a ton of wins that included the Masters, the Players' Championship, and the gold medal at the Olympics? Or would you rather have um, Xander Shoffley's year, who he's got two majors? Hovland didn't even really hesitate, and he said, uh, I mean, two majors, that sounds pretty nice to me. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we debated it on this show. I posed the question, I think it was before the Olympics, which did s- seem to sort of sway it towards Scotty, but um, both Frankie and Trent were, were very definitive that they would take Scotty's year. You know, it's 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 still you know we're, the Olympics are still new, right? And so we're, we don't exactly know. We it was an incredible week and it was an awesome finish, but we don't really know how much the players themselves value it. You know, it seems like Scotty was was pretty emotional and stuff. But again, I just I, I get back. I go back to I was kind of on that Xander side where it's just like you win two major championships and that's at the end of the day that's the currency. Like that is what that is what people are going to remember. And maybe, maybe they will remember the Olympics and maybe that will take an elevated sort of role in the game. But as of right now, like I still think major championships are King. And I think like what happens this week, these next three weeks is not really all that like relevant. Like, I mean, I guess if, 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 if one of them wins it, it would, it would probably further sway it their way. But as of right now, like I, I, I think as time goes on and sort of the, the shine fades from, from Scotty's year and all the time and all the money stuff, like, Two majors will last the test of time. I don't know. I, I, I you might be right, but I, I just live in such a narrative-based world that it just seems like Scotty. And I guess it's almost two different questions: like who had the more successful year, and who had the more like interesting but also successful year. And well, that's, that's not a question, right? That's that's kind of the way I'm looking at it too. Where it's, I mean, it's he did. He won the Masters. He won all these huge events. He did win a gold medal. Like I just. Like time is there, the shine's going to wear off, but we're always going to look back on this year of Scotty's. Like there's been so much talk about how it's, oh, wow, this is up there with one of those Tiger years. Yeah, Xander won two majors. None of these years are going to fa- like fade away and people are going to forget about one or the other. I just think the level of dominance that Scotty had is going to, w- it weighs more and weighs heavier than winning two majors. Just that's my personal opinion. And again, a lot of it's narrative based for me because I'm like, Every when I run into people who aren't necessarily huge golf fans, but they know what's going on in the sports world, they're like, "How about this year from Scotty?" Like I, the, nobody mentioned Xander yeah. really, um, and that's not Xander's fault. It's not. It's nobody's fault. But I'm just saying. I think when you look back on it, it's going to be this was Scotty's year. I think it'll be interesting to see how the Player of the Year voting goes. The the one that's um, vo- voted by their peers, not voted by the media. 
because maybe maybe what maybe what Victor's maybe there's a slight disconnect. Maybe maybe the media and all of us think one way, but the players might think another way. I think that's a very. I also think that player of the year and which year would you rather have are two very different questions. I think like undoubtedly, I think player of the year is going to be voted to and go to Scotty Scheffler. Like he was the player of the year from pretty much start to finish. He's been winning all kinds of stuff. He's won the most. He's won a major. He's won players plus gold medal, which you could argue equals somewhere close to a major. So I don't think that's close. But I think player to player, it is quite different. And like Victor Hovland, if he's trying to get over that the hump and he's reached a point in his career, like I think, although Scotty's was the Masters, but like Rory, if, if Scotty's win in the majors was the U.S. Open, like instead of the Masters, like I think Rory would rather have the two majors year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the majors mean so much at a certain level and to a certain player versus building out like an overall better year. I think Scotty has had a better year. But if you're adding stuff to your career, I think it's like certain guys reach a point where it narrows in and it's like majors, majors, majors. I thought it was interesting. Also, Victor, he's he's just very interesting to watch speak because you can tell he's, he, he thinks a lot about golf and about his golf swing. And he basically said that the reason why he wanted to, why he like changed everything is because he just didn't want to see the ball curve left. He just wanted the cut. And he said he was still hitting it really, really solid, but it wasn't curving left to right. And so that was just blow it all up, basically. It just shows you how like neurotic these, these, these guys are. Remember Colin? Remember when Colin yes. showed up to whichever tournament that was like a year or two it was ago? The, he, it was um, Boston. It was the US he, Open at Brookline. And he just was like, I'm swinging the same. Everything looks and feels the same, except the ball is just drawing, not cutting. And he's like, and it's just fucking with me. Like I don't, <laughs> I've been cutting the ball forever. That's just what I do. And now I just look up and the ball is drawing. He's like, it's not bad. It's hit well. It's struck well. It's flying in the air, but it's just fucking drawing and not cutting. And it's like, fuck, man. Like these guys at this level were thinking that we got no chance over here with what we're trying to do around here. It's funny it's because impossible. like when I was growing up, it was like the draw was the sexy shot. Like mm -hmm. that was what you, that, and you know, it's still, I think the draw still has like some, some more sex appeal, but these pros on the large part, not, you know, they, they prefer to cut it over a draw it for sure. Guys, when it comes to getting your hair cut, don't just go anywhere. Visit the specialists who live and breathe men's hair at Sport Clips Haircuts. Stylists undergo special training so that they are the experts in men's hair, making him the masters of mullets, the finessers of fades, and the understudies of the undercut. I was just there. I got my wow. haircut a couple days ago. I've been um, slowly dropping down the guards. Been going. I started at two. I was at one and a half. Now I'm at one. Wow. You know, I might just be, I'm, I might be near the end of the road here. Um, cause the back is getting the, the circle is getting larger of, of the patch of no, no hair. So I'm coming to the end probably, but I will still go to sport clips because I need, I'll still need my haircut. I'll just have to get it shaved. And it's a nice experience in there. I mean, they Beautiful. got TVs. I'm watching sports. I did the thing a couple weeks ago. I went in, checked in online sit down they got very comfortable like stadium seats with the cushions and then there yeah. was like some it was like the olympics were on so i was watching some olympic action and then afterwards they're like you want the whole shampoo experience i was like of course i do and you do the thing where you lean they lean you back into like the sink and they just like massage your head with shampoo the oh, whole thing's yeah. a great experience it's easy to have confidence in your look when you're in the hands of a pro just another way sport clips helps keep your head and your hair in the game sport clips it's a game changer Xander had a couple cool quotes. He, uh, you know, he was kind of asked about, you know, we're getting ready to gear for, up for the playoffs mindset coming off a disappointing Olympic kind of finish. And uh, he spoke a little bit about how he is more motivated and fired up than he expected to be because he was more down and disappointed after the Olympics than he expected to be. And he kind of talked about watching Roy McElroy essentially win three FedEx Cups in the blistering heat at Eastlake. Um and, you know, Xander, if you recall, has like been in the mix there many times and just hasn't quite been able to get it done. And he said that really pissed me off, which I love of like he and he said that kind of internally about himself, that like that he was able to just do it. And I wasn't 
that pissed me off. And then he kind of concluded by saying, when push comes to shove, you're just going to have to be a dog at some point, which I, I live for that. I think that's such a cool mentality from a guy who's won two majors now this year. And he just kind of gets that like, okay, I'm clearly good enough to be at this level where we're all pretty goddamn close in these big events and who's going to be a dog and get it done. And he's kind of recognizing that. I wonder if it pissed him off because it was Rory who, who won it. I, I remember we've, we've talked about this on the show a little bit. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't think he's a huge Rory fan these days. I don't think watching Rory McIlroy lift trophies brings a lot of joy to Xander. Doesn't Shoffley's appear life. to. It really doesn't. <laughs> appear know? To. It's, the, it's the Xander Cantlay versus Rory thing. It's like, there seems to be something there. I feel like. There's a hundred percent something there. I mean, it goes back to the it goes back to the policy board stuff where Rory's Rory and Jimmy Dunn are like really really great pals, and you know Jimmy Dunn resigned from the policy board because you know he had all these disagreements with with Cantlay and and sort of their direction. So I think that shit runs deep. I, I think it's I very real. I this is I have no inside information. This is just speculation. But Cantlay largely pretty quiet to the media out on the golf course. Doesn't say much. Just kind of does his thing. Behind the scenes, he's got to be such a catty bitch. He definitely is like, he says mean things, really mean things about people he doesn't like. You know what I mean? Yes. And and Xander is like his sounding board for that. So I, sh- I assure you, Xander and Cantlay have just a ferocious text history, shitting on Rory McIlroy, laughing at it when he misses putts. And then they've got this clearly like everything that Rory does He's the darling. He's like you're just saying. He's the class pet, Dan. He's boys with Jimmy Dunn and everybody, and they're giving him all these positions and all that. And then the storylines that come out about Xander and Cantlay is like they didn't want to play for their country at the Ryder Cup. They demanded yeah. to get paid. They're going to get kicked off the team. And the two of them together have to just be like, "Fuck Rory McIlroy." They <laughs> just fucking hate that guy, <laughs> dude. It's so it's I, it's so again it's full speculation, but I'm I'm ready to declare that a fact. They definitely just hate this guy. And it makes it interesting. It makes it really, I wish more people knew about it because that's the stuff people want. And that is the good stuff. So hopefully we get something down the stretch here uh, going into the playoffs. That's going to be, you know, tight. I, the format is, uh, so it's three events now. It's two events that are pretty much normal tournaments where, you know, you're going to, you're going to, based on your finish, rank somewhere and then once again it's a it's kind of a net event at the at the tour championship at the finale where the leader of the whole thing will tee off i believe at 10 under and then there's like an eight under a seven under 600 five under a bunch of like whatever all the way down to even par based on if you're like 30th uh and 25 million dollars goes to the first place winner at the fedex cup at the end of the whole thing yeah, this is going to be. I mean, there's always a lot of talk about like whether the the the, the scoring system um, is good and like whether it's it's worth it. You're going to get a lot of that this year because Scotty's Scotty's lead in the FedEx Cup is so severe, and especially if he wins this week or next week, which is like statistically like a pretty decent shot, he already has a 1900 point lead over Xander Shoffley, which. I think if Xander won three more regular events and Scotty didn't play at all, he would still be leading. You get 500 points for a win that's not a, not a signature event. I think it's either 600 or 650 for a signature event. So he might actually be three signature events ahead. So if he wins this week, which he is, you know, plus 330, I think were the odds. Like he is, he's feasted on these on these setups. He could have such a lead and then literally play one bad round and be completely out of it. I think the I think the PGA Tour people are really really hoping that either Scotty or Xander wins because if they don't if it wins the FedEx Cup because if one of them don't then it's really like this this just has really almost no no bearing on reality and how the actual year played out. Yeah, then don't call it the playoffs, right? Like you can't because that's how playoffs work. Playoffs, you know, if you if you if you want to call it the year long race, then call it that overall like they do in the premier league where there's not a playoff it's like who was just the best team throughout the entire year start to finish but the minute that you introduce the term playoffs and you have playoffs events we have that in every other sport that we do over here where you could win the regular season the boston bruins did it last year they had the most points i believe in the history of nhl regular season and they lost in the first round to the florida panthers so it's like that's not uh, that's not 
if you're going to say playoffs, I don't think that's that big of a deal. If Scotty goes into the final round or the final tournament, he's got a two stroke lead and then he doesn't get it done. I think people are going to say, yeah, like the fucking Patriots 18 and one season to like, that's okay. They just didn't get it done. And it would be kind of viewed at the similar regard, I think. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And that's why they, that's why they doubled, they doubled the payout this year for the Comcast business top 10, which people don't even, probably don't even know what that is. It's basically, yeah. Scotty, <laughs> what the Scotty fuck got, is that? Scotty got $8 million at the end of the regular season for being in first place, uh, in the, there's the top 10 in the FedEx Cup standings at the end of the regular season all got at least $2 million. I guess so Scotty Comcast is just not getting their money's worth for that. Cause <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that's a lot of money they're putting up. That's a miss. How many fucking four play golf videos could they have bought for that? Fuck it. How much money are they putting <laughs> right. into that thing? Oh, we'll pump Come the on. shit out of Comcast. Come, kidding me, Comcast? I'll get a tattoo to my forehead if you got. And these guys are who? What is the Comcast business top ten? The Comcast business top ten. It's just the regular season. Scotty got eight million and went all the way down to two million for Shane Lowry. So Scotty's already at. If you include, he 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 finished the regular season with twenty eight million in official earnings, which smashes the all-time record and he's already there's eight million more that he got for uh the comcast business top 10 so that's 36 million plus whatever his fedex cut bonus is plus he'll probably will this be the year that 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 someone breaks the rory tiger player impact program probably it feels like it this is scotty's probably going to win it given all the times he won and the arrest it would seem like he would be first in that the arrest might have put him over the top on you know like i think there's anyone has anyone made more headlines this year in golf than Scotty Show? I mean, Tiger I didn't really, say no accidents. Rory missing those putts was the biggest story for like a week straight. So that's, that was huge. He, that's actually what he was doing. He loves money so much that right. you know he knew he would lose the U.S. Open. That's right. But he knew that it, it did better for him in the player. Impact I would program. argue was, that he got more publicity for those putts than he would have gotten if he had won the tournament. No chance. <laughs> It's no oh, fucking chance. Damn, I mean, dude, the right? only thing is that it's Rory, and a... he hasn't done it in ten years, so it would have been a fucking huge, massive deal. But those putts, man, that was that's one of those things where it gets outside the bubble. And I got people texting me being like, "Wow, did you see that Rory putt? That type of shit." I think Trent might be on. I, I'm not saying it's even, but I think that you saying no chance is a little crazy. That is that gets taught, you know, like I don't know, like Jean Vandeveld he gets talked about more than whoever the hell won that year. You know what I'm saying? It's like, the only thing people like almost more than a redemption story, redemption's tip top pretty much. And that was what, what Rory would have gone through if he'd won. They kind of like what, and he's, he's become a polarizing borderline hated figure in some circles in the game of golf and the watching a guy like that Southern fail California circles. And it's just, it's huge news, huge news. Trent's going to move to Florida and start hanging out with Cantlay and, Sh and Shoffley and just, fucking trash rory non-stop on this podcast. i would if anything and we might have to delete this so they don't know i would become a mole for rory i i would i was gonna say which mm -hmm. you get texts from but you you land you land in florida and both yeah. both guys hit you up say trent what's up buddy like you want to play with us tomorrow who are you going with can't land shop or you going with rory 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 even though, even though you get two versus one it's not even a question yeah because yeah. Okay. I, I yeah i am i'm in love with rory mcelroy I mean, so it's have Cantley might have to pay us to hang out with him. You know, I mean, I don't who, <laughs> right. Like a man, I've always loved, I would have, I would love to just get absorbed into Rory's circle where mm -hmm. I'm just like one of the guys. We go to Ireland every once in a while. We get treated like royalty. Then we're in Jupiter. Now that we're both probably going to be living down there and we're just hanging out and we're buds. We're getting, we're eating oysters together. Um, I, I, yeah, I would be Rory by a million miles, dude. If he like the Tuesday after the U S open collapse, he, he's like, you're part of the text where he's like, Hey dude, having a bunch of the guys over tonight to just unwind and throw back oh. a couple of beers. I got some whiskey ordered in. If you want to swing by, but you just want to be I'll, part of that crew. I'll bring a bottle of red and I'll walk right in that door. <laughs> <laughs> bottle of red. Uh, yeah, that's a good fucking crew. I think tigers in that crew. Like I, you know, JT. Shane Lowry's in that crew. I think JT's yeah. in that crew too. Like that's a fucking crew right there. That's kind of where you want to be. Um, yeah, I, I do like the idea of being the worst golfer in Jupiter. By the way, I think that 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 is really what I'm going to be if I move. Kind of sounds like a new Instagram bio. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I was looking at you know Paige Paige, Paige Sparan Sparanic is the OG golf girl. You could be you could be the worst golfer in Jupiter. I think that uh, that's got a nice ring to it. That's going to be my new moniker because it's going to be also pretty true. So um, if I go down there, start I'm going to be the worst golfer in Jupiter. That's my new name. Uh, I did a little bit of math. If Scotty wins 
all three playoff events, I believe his on course earnings would get to uh sixty seven point three million dollars, which is a hilarious number. I did I looked like the highest paid, I believe, when you go to NFL and NBA, they're in like fifty million, fifty five million range for QBs and some and like Steph Curry and Scotty's on course earnings for twenty twenty four. Again, he would have to win. He's still going to get up near there. But if he wins these next two events, which is FedEx and or the uh, St. Jude and the BMW, and then holds on and wins at East Lake, it would be like sixty-seven over sixty-seven million dollars. Uh, that is just a hilarious number for a golfer in one year. It's funny that like the the defining characteristics of the FedEx Cup playoffs, which which the tour has spent so much money trying to promote, is just money and heat. <laughs> like that's mm-hmm. the two yeah. things that people talk about. Because you've got you got Den- you got Memphis this week, which is by all accounts like maybe the hottest tournament of the year. It's middle of August in Memphis. Remember last year was Lucas Glover's swamp ass, mm-hmm. where he just couldn't oh. get a, couldn't get the right pair of pants. And then Denver will be a nice reprieve, you know, get up in the mountains. They're gonna, that's going to be that, that, I saw that course is playing eighty one hundred and fifty yards for the BMW Championship next oh. year, which makes I mean that's that's functionally still not that long for them because it's like if you take away ten percent. It's like 7,300 yards because of the elevation. And then they go back to Atlanta where it's just the hottest place in the world. It's crazy that the three, the three cities they choose are Memphis, Denver, and Atlanta. There's no, another, another year with no New York event, another year with no, with no, you know, Chicago. Boston. Event. They used it, to do Boston right. every couple of years. They used TPC to do TPC Boston. Boston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, and I understand that it's not that simple to just say, oh, let's put an event there. It's all about sponsors and where the sponsor wants their event. And, you know, it's, it, the course has to have the right thing, but it just, the, the the general consensus of the entire world or the entire country is kind of stay away from the southeast in this time of the year and the PGA Tour is just going two out of their three events are dead in the heart of the southeast. Yeah, the interesting part is like if you're really going for the money maker, which is the TV dollars or whatnot, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't you know like so the players are hot. I don't think anybody watching cares. It's like it is what it is. Just let me see good golf down the stretch, so they could kind of get away with it. I think, but I do like Tiger might be one of the deepest sweaters in history. And I just remember him in those East Lake days going through just like four different shirt changes right. and his shirts would be so sweaty. So yeah, that's going to be an absolute grind. That's going to be a grind. Let me tell you a little something. We spent the last two days at uh, TBC Boston, Barstool Classic. Boston's obviously our uh, kind of our our founding home when it comes to Barstool. Dave, big Boston guy, Boston sports taken off in the early mid 2000s, kind of helped raise Barstool to the level that it's gotten to now. So we had a great turnout out there and people were loving the truly tequila sodas. And let me also say that if there's, there's one region of people in this country who would probably tell it how it is and probably let you know if they weren't big fans yes. of this product that we got all over the golf course, it would probably be this region right here in Boston, Massachusetts. And I heard all day, ah, these things are fucking awesome, Riggs. And they're <laughs> loving the they're <laughs> loving the tequila soda. So a big shout out to Truly. These things are popping off right now. Yeah, I drank a bunch of these when I was in Florida. I mean, they're, you can drink them anywhere, but especially during the summer on a beach next to the pool. These things really are delicious. That's the most feedback we get at the Barstool Classic where there's Trulies everywhere. They're like, these tequila sodas are fantastic. So if you see them in the store, pick them up, get them, drink them, and have yourself a summer because we're running out. Summer's running out. We're running so out, get man. these now and enjoy the, the rest of your summer. Refreshing blend of uh, real fruit juice from concentrate, sparkling water, and premium tequila blanco, lime, pineapple, guava, grapefruit, and watermelon. They've all got 5% ABV and just 100 calories. Truly Tequila Soda, keep it light, hard seltzer beverage company, Boston, Massachusetts. Please drink responsibly. I saw uh, Hideki Matsuyama and his team were victims of a, of a robbery. They got what? robbed in London. But they didn't take the medal, but they didn't take the medal. Is that a, is that a classy burglar? I think you got to take the medal. So I'm very confused. During a stopover in London while en route to Memphis, Matsuyama's wallet was stolen, as were the passports for his caddy and coach, who have now been forced to return to Japan and won't be able to make it to the U.S. until, at best, Eastlake at the uh, at the very earliest. Hideki's bronze medal was not stolen. So I'm trying to gather from this. This just had to be a bag that was taken 
and it's it, whatever was in the bag, right? Like, cause I, yeah. Or cause if it's a stopover, I was trying to think like, if they're still at the airport, somebody had to have grabbed a bag or did they stay in London for like a day, go to their hotel and then got robbed once they're in their hotel. You know, I was like, trying to figure this whole fucking thing out. Cause it didn't make any sense. If your bag gets taken, is that a, is that, are you telling people that you got robbed or are you telling people, I feel like that's, it's kind of a scary word, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, we need more details on like, yeah, where would they have? I don't understand. Yeah, and his like, how about his caddy and his coach have to go back to Japan because they can't get another passport. Yeah. They can't get in. Shortly after winning a bronze medal, a falling victory to a robbery. That's all that says. Falling or right. falling victory, falling victim to a robbery. That's all that it says. I don't even know what that, I don't, you know, that's pretty vague, but thinking about it a little more though, if I'm, if you're robbing someone who has, who just won an Olympic medal, I don't think you take the medal. Cause that brings way more heat. You lose a, a wallet, a couple of passports, it still sucks. And they got stolen. That's no good. But if you steal even a bronze medal, they're like, well, now we got to track this guy down. You do you think there's him. a tracking device or some sort of ID on the medals themselves? Like, do you think that that's because, like, obviously they don't want them showing up on the black market or they don't want them showing up, like, you know, no, on I eBay bet. or something. There's got to be some sort of mechanism for figuring out which medal like, is that which. Ever happened? I'm sure it has. I saw one a couple of people were shitting on the medals. Like one guy, one guy was like, he had like a bronze medal maybe, and he was outside on a pool day or something and it got like worn down and then he posted on like TikTok or something that like he was expecting a higher quality metal and then people were shitting on him being like I don't think this guy knows how the like the element bronze works <laughs> and like it turned into a whole thing um but I don't know that's a good question I mean they give out a lot of them it's got to be pretty expensive yeah true it's yeah I mean well luckily Hideki didn't get his stolen that's good I also would guess that the people that were doing the the thievery probably didn't know who he is right they're just like stealing stuff that's right and also if you you can't that stealing it's not the same thing but stealing uh, an olympic medal is kind of like stealing the mona lisa like who are you going to sell that to people are going to be like where'd you get this right why are you how are you just randomly selling a bronze medal there's actually i looked at the reports there's one man missing one who's a pretty prominent athlete that like we're just gonna arrest you <laughs> you can't it's not like a, it's not it's not just like a, a nice gold watch or something it's it's a very public thing that someone no longer has and whoever does have it you're gonna have a hard time selling that thing so monday at after the barstool classic at boston um there's a little bit of rain we had a double rainbow and myself tommy dana beers there was a poor man scotty scheffler there that we were all taking pictures with who played in the tournament um i think they called him dollar store scotty is what he was saying his home club calls him but we were all out on this patio looking at this double rainbows. Rainbows are fucking crazy. Have you guys ever really, like, when you really see a rainbow, that is. I can only see the yellow. Ah, fuck. So it's just all, a I can yellow. Only, it's just a yellow line. Yeah. Just Art. a beam of light for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's still cool. It's still nice. So, like, I can definitely, like, be like, oh, there's a rainbow because the yellow sticks out. But I don't got the, I don't got the full spectrum. Uh, no, Riggs, I'm with you. I don't, I've never even really looked into what they are. But I mean, they're beautiful and they're gorgeous, and I feel lucky every time I see one. But I don't know why they, what they are, how they are, why they are. No idea. So I talked to uh, Chat GPT, and I said, "How do rainbows okay. happen?" And then he said, or she, <laughs> "Rainbows are a beautiful natural phenomenon. That's true. That occur during the interaction of sunlight with water droplets in the atmosphere." Here's a step-by-step -step explanation of how rainbows form. First one: sunlight and water droplets. Sunlight is composed of many colors, which can be seen when the light is dispersed. Rainbows typically form when there are water droplets in the air, such as after a rain shower, true, or in the midst of a waterfall. Also true, I've noticed that. Refraction. This was a word. I saw the refraction word, and I said, this is a word I haven't heard since high school, probably. But I know that this is going to get me closer to understanding. When yeah. sunlight enters a water droplet, it slows down and bends. Uh, open parenthesis, refracts, close parenthesis, due to the change in medium from air to water. So as the sunlight is traveling from air, now it's traveling through water. When it does that, the uh, the light starts to bend and essentially changes, which, and we're not going to go through all the bullet points. This is more of a golf show. But as you, what I don't understand, I get all that shit, but it doesn't it feel like there should then be like little 
pockets or polka dots of like colors in the sky not like a perfect fucking arch with different colors like what yeah that's right it shouldn't be as i yeah as like fully formed as it is right right that of all the stuff that the ancients like you know with the chariots going across the sky and poseidon with this fucking trident people trying to get home from the battle of troy all that stuff like we've kind of dispelled a lot of it the rainbows i they're fully justified for being like I mean, there's got to be a god out there, like the god of beauty or something that's painting this fucking perfect arch across the sky that's got all the colors. Like, what are you talking about that that just occurred? That's true. That is a good point. Like, back in those days, they were like, whoa, the sun is that. What is that thing? And I get that because they had no understanding. And then you see a rainbow and you're like, all right. We're living in this is Narnia. We're living in <laughs> That's Narnia why they, because why they thought there were leprechauns. They thought there were leprechauns. Pot of totally gold fair. at the end of that thing. It? Totally fair. I'm giving them a pass. The leprechaun thing. You're exa- like that. The rainbow. The rainbow's too perfect. You just can't. You can't get away with that. You can't sit there and try to be like, oh yeah, just science. Like I'm reading through refraction and Jet GBT's talking to me. <laughs> okay. I think even. Even the the capital C creator, even he probably looks at that and goes, I got a little cocky with the rainbows. I I got a little too like everything else you can kind of explain and it's oh yeah, this does that and this forms into that. The rainbow, he he knows. He's like, I can't take it away because now imagine imagine rainbows disappear and then people are like, Holy shit, what's going on? And so you can't take him away. But I think there is a part of it that is kind of like I got a little over my skis with the rainbows. Right. Like here in his little debrief of like at the year, you know, we're about 2000 years AD and he's going through his debrief on how things are going. And he's like, they're not going to believe the rainbow thing. That's just not. There's that, that was a right. mistake. <laughs> he's like, there's yeah, hurricanes are still happening. Tornadoes. People are still confused about the rainbows. And I get that. I got a little crazy with that one. So I'll just have to, I'll have to eat that one. But yeah, it's right. They're wild, man. They're wild. He's like, when we do this over again, we're going to, we're going to have to leave the rainbows in the cutting room floor. That just wasn't, that wasn't a good idea. Those are fucking crazy. Jump the shark. That's right. That's right. I, I think that's right. All right. I believe we got a little closest to the pin and uh, our leader. Yes. It was nice when our leader was gone. He's frolicking oh, on vacation. Shit. We're yeah. trying to send snakes his way and whatever, um, but now he's back, and uh, we're going to get a little update from Mr. Bush, and so if the gravy train could enter, please enter the chat. There he is. Young gravy. <laughs> young gravy. People here. call me young gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Okay, so Trent was gone. It was just Riggs, Dan, and I. Last week, first question with all the weather, total holes played in competition, 72 holes. Insane. I feel like big brain, you know, big brain. I feel I, 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 you know, we talk about the, uh, we talk about the, the curse. So, the Matt Kuchar thing was weird. Yeah, that was that a weird was, thing. That they, didn't have to. That's do weird. With... No, that's that's weird. That continues the curse. That's every a, time. A there's a little something bit of a fucking reach. weird. Okay, well, you know, we're in the reach. I'm business. sure you guys <laughs> talked about it. Business. I cannot believe the Matt Kuchar thing. It's <laughs> one of the more. Give us your take. Give us your give us your take. <laughs> don't do that. That would be my take. Like don't. And I think I might have saw, seen a quote, saw a quote from the show where they, one of you guys was like, Matt Kuchar clearly has no idea how the internet's going to react to anything. That is true. That's like, you don't do that if you know anything about anything. And I'm not saying you should uh, make your decisions based on that, but you got to know people are going to be like, this is fucking stupid what you're doing. Yeah. That, you were I right, mean, by that- the way, Riggs. He, 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 was, he said that he had no clue what was happening uh, online, but his agent called him and he was like, ah, uh, I'm just, you know, I... I don't really pay attention to that stuff. You know, I just, I, you know, I'm happy to not be involved. It's a beautiful place to live. That was, in. My, I, that was, one of, that was my Matt one Kuchar. Of, one of my key takeaways, Trent Daddy, was just that I was very jealous of Matt Kuchar on what happened Sunday and Monday. That to be that oblivious and really blissfully just living, making decisions, you couldn't possibly care less what anybody's saying online about it. I thought True. that that came off as a great place to, uh, to live in. But I will say that that move could pretty much be summed up by, Kirk Minahan texted me and said, that's a big time Kirk Minahan move. I'm on team Kuchar on this one. So I think that pretty much tells you, tells you what you need to know about the, about the situation. Uh, uh, gravy train. All right. Gravy train. So next was rainfall in, in rainfall in inches in Richmond, Virginia on Friday. And it was only 1.31 inches of rain. So Jesus, we were way, way above that. I won because I had the least with 3.1. All right. Fucking Hurricane Debbie. 
Third one was highest best ball score, like team score at the Monday Barstool Classic at TBC Boston. Uh, 82 plus nine it was because Dan decided to go another route and go over, over under par. So Dan wins with plus seven. So Dan wow. takes that one. The, the last one was the stock price for Nike by close on Friday, which was $74.25. And Dan won that was seventy four forty nine. Jesus. Wow. So Big week for Dan. Dan and I both caught up this week a little bit. So Trent's at 49. I'm at 42. Fuck. Dan at 39. Frankie, 35. Riggs, 34. Ugh. Didn't capitalize on any. We're catching up, Trent. <laughs> Me. I want to hit 50 bad. Are we, are we, are we, are do we, des- do we decide? Are we, doing a, are, we, are we making a line in the sand of like season one of Closest to the Pin? Are we, we going to do like a winner? That, I we? think we said we we're going to do the end of the. Were we going to do the end of the golf season or the end of the calendar year? Let's do golf season. Talk sounds like it. sounds like a rigs decision. Yeah. So well, maybe we after do, okay. FedEx Cup playoffs or after I President's Cup, game. maybe I'm in fucking last place. <laughs> yeah, let's do golf season. So is that is that the end of the tour championship or end of the President's Cup or how do we want to uh, end of the, the live team championship? It's a good question. Maybe yeah. before or the, the yeah. before the fall season starts, like the week before that. Isn't that like that's? I think there's like, is there any break at all? Is there? We're doing our own no. playoff. I, we're gonna do our own playoffs. We should do our own playoff, and Trent gets a Trent gets a ten point lead. Right. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to think about that. We'll have to think. Yeah, about I don't know that. when this we'll season we'll technically like ends, but this week closest to the pin. Are we ready? Yep. Yes. All right. FedEx St. Jude Championship. It's just got Scotty Scheffler written all over it. It's another signature event. PGA Tour setup. He's won six PGA Tour events, including the Olympics. So this weekend. Total number, oh, and there's no cut, I believe. Total number of birdies for Scotty Scheffler. Just birdies, so eagles don't count. Whoa. By the way, did you guys, I wanted to read this out loud um, before, just one thing about Scotty. All the all the categories that he led on the PGA Tour this year, you know, just in leading, in statistics. <laughs> he, he, was, he was first in, this is from Justin Ray, who if you guys aren't following Justin Ray, I feel like Justin Ray, Monday Q, Sort of the I'm I'm working on like filling out a, a a Mount Rushmore of golf follows. Those two are definitely in it. Scoring average, birdie average, strokes gained total, greens and regulation, strokes gained approach, strokes gained tee to green, distance from edge of the fairway. This is my favorite. Proximity from 50 to 125 yards. Proximity from 100 to 125 yards. Proximity from 150 to 175 yards. Putts per green and regulation. Front nine scoring average. Back nine scoring average. Par four scoring. Par five scoring. So someone got him on the par threes. Birdie or better percentage, bounce back percentage, birdie percentage inside 125 yards, birdie percentage from the fairway, percentage of rounds in the 60s, wins, top threes, top tens, FedEx cut points, earnings, and then arrests during major championships. He got the joke in there right at the end. Nice. That's a good year. <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking he had, dominant. That was a hell of a year. That's crazy. Are we all in? I'm in. You're not. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. Now we are. Okay. Riggs 23, Trent 25, Alex 22, Dan 18. Are we deciding that Frankie's the one we talked about before the show is, is a fair question? Because I have a backup question if not. I think it's fair. We don't know anything about. Right. What is okay, the look it up. Okay. So Frankie Borelli, who was awesome yesterday in the, in the reaction to the Creator Classic, I think he actually might have. I think he actually might have made a difference. It seemed like there might be some role for, for Mr. Borelli and, and perhaps the rest of the four play crew in the creator classic. He, yeah, he reacted very strongly and I think it actually made a difference. Yeah, but anyways, some, there's some conversation. Is, we'll, see, we'll see what maybe happens and maybe what doesn't happen, but phenomenal. He is flying back from Ireland. I presume, I don't know for sure, but I presume that his flight is from Dublin or yeah, from Dublin to New York. I imagine, but even if it's not the total flight time. So from leaving the gate to getting into the gate, of whichever flight Frankie Borelli takes across the Atlantic Ocean. So whether it's Dublin to New York, or I don't know if he's connecting somewhere, but probably not. Total flight time. And, d- and, don't, and don't look it up. Don't look up how far the flight is from, from Dublin to New York. From that would, Dublin you know, to that New would just York. be. Yeah. And it includes, you know, any taxi time. It includes, it includes all of that stuff. How are we going to get gate. this information? I think flight aware. Yeah, a flight aware. He'll tell. Yeah, we can ask him his flight number, and it's there's like an official okay. log okay. of how long it took. Um, kind of have an idea because when we went to Scotland, but also there's a difference between going 
east to west, west to east. I also just don't know where anything is. At uh, I, I know that Ireland is closer to New York than Scotland. I do know that. That is true. I might be way off here. But I also, we all flew, I think, like from New Yorkish to like Edinburgh or London. And then we went London up to like somewhere else. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I bet it. My guess is it. All right. We're in. Dan, eight hours, 12 minutes. Riggs, six hours, 48 minutes. Trent, five hours, 53 minutes. Alex, seven hours, 11 minutes. I think Alex is in a good spot. I know I'm that only saying London that is right like. Just under six, right? From New York, I think it's I think it's around there. But I don't know if on the way back isn't the way back. Oh slower? yeah, it might be different. Yeah, it should be the slower, way back is yeah. definitely you, slower because the flight to LA against, is way longer than against, the flight from New York. And you go against the wind on the way back, right? Yeah, okay. A little bit of a headwind. They call it the biz. Mr. Donald J. Trump is back on Twitter. Big big return. Uh, did that e- did that interview with Elon Musk? They had some technical technical difficulties. You guys watched that one? It was actually kind of that one. I listened to it. Yeah, I thought it was actually. You kind of got a sense. We're not you know we're not not a politics show, but you kind of got a sense for what Donald Trump is at, like actually like when he is like running a business. It, it was really interesting listening to him talk about about the failures of the security of the um, Secret Service. For his assassination, did you get to that part? Oh yeah, I just I just thought it was a cultural capital type listen. I was like, I gotta listen to this fucking thing. People are gonna be talking yeah. about this. And, and he was he was saying, you know, they they should have cleared this. I was expecting to be like these fucking idiots, this that, and the other. And he's like, no, there was a mistake. You know, like it happens. Like this is what we got to clean up. So I just thought it was an interesting view. But anyways, Donald J. Trump. So he came back with with a vengeance. Ten tweets on Friday, August twelfth, or on Monday, August twelfth. Zero tweets on the thirteenth. How many tweets will he have Friday, Saturday, Sunday posted to his official Twitter account? Okay. <laughs> um, weekend, you know, he he's he's not he's 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 a little angry these days. Like I think the weekend he could he could start firing some off, but it also seems like he doesn't have the controls to the actual Twitter. It seems like he's posting his shit on True Social and then it's kind of more of a campaign thing. But anyways, like I don't know how much he's posting on True Social. Like I that's the thing. Are you not on Truth? I, I'm really not. I'm, I don't I'm the opposite. Riggs and I, we've talked about on the show where I'm just like, I know the Elon Musk Trump thing happened. I'm aware of these events, but I don't, I don't look into any of it. And that's for both. That's, I don't know. You know, I know that they've got walls on the other side and like, but I don't dig into any of it. I'm just sort of aware of them. All right. Riggs 18, Dan seven, Alex five, Trent four. We got a big gap huh? there. We got a big gap there. I'm rooting that he big doesn't gap. play too much golf this weekend. That's a big concern of mine. <laughs> it takes up a lot of time. Uh, okay. As you guys are, are all very aware of, the, the English Premier League returns this weekend. Oh. It's, incredible how much, it's incredible how much soccer players, these guys play way too much. Just They get two weeks off the entire year. Is that right? The guys, Yes, dude. The guys who played in the Euros or the Copa America, they literally were playing nonstop from August through like the – end of june maybe even into july and then they get two weeks off and then preseason starts wow. it's crazy That's- yeah they, they play way they play way too much anyways all 10 teams or all 20 teams play this weekend including manchester united on friday against fulham how many goals will be scored by english players alex this is going to require a little bit of this is going to require a little bit of uh of, re- of research on just your dm end. uh justin ray just dm justin ray on sunday <laughs> yeah. and i guarantee you he'll just get the answer for you i can i ask a question sure what how what percentage of the players in the premier league are english i would guess it's probably like a third okay of like starters maybe maybe like okay. yeah maybe like 23 per team 10 games Right. Sort of 10 thing. games, 20 teams. 10 games, 10 games. 10 games. Let's say there's a couple goals a game. AI on Google right now is saying 35% since 92 are from England. Wow, nice nice guess, Dan. Okay. okay. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Appreciate it. There's no Harry Kane to, to sort of elevate the numbers anymore. He's uh what? La Liga, Bundesliga? He's in Bayern, Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich, Bundesliga. Who's Mbappe's uh, Real Madrid now? Or, uh, yeah, Real now? Yes, right? Mbappe's Real Madrid. Do you see that they the Saudis made Vinicius Jr. an offer for to pay him a billion dollars? I saw that nice. right before I hopped on here. I thought was it a billion dollars a year? It was. I, I, well, I, I, was that what it was? It would it not. Yeah, I think it was a bill. Yeah, I think it Incredible. was a billion dollars. Like I said, it was thirteen times his salary right now. <laughs> you got to take it's it. actually. I don't know. It's actually. I mean, it's the most. It's the most 
you know, we've been talking about this money thing forever. Like this is actually probably the most like perfect example of this guy is 24 years old. I think he is like well, top five player in the world plays for Real Madrid. They win the Champions League every year. Like he is doing what you're supposed to do. And the Saudis just came in and we'll give you $10 billion over the next 10 years. Do you want to come? Oh, man. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I think you probably should just take it. You take that, and then you could buy sports teams. You buy whatever you want after that. What is the value of a what is the value of a legacy, boys? I know. Not ten billion dollars. I know. <laughs> if it's a billion dollars a year, I don't think you can be the guy who turned down a billion dollars a year. <laughs> I, yeah, especially when you're making like fifty right now. Especially when we're so through the looking glass that like just do yeah. it. Yeah. Fucking do it. Yeah. Life is kind of over when that happens. You've 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 won. Billionaire. I mean, not even a billionaire. You're like a mini billionaire. That's come on. So you guys see that? Um, and I, I've seen this before where it's like, how many seconds is a million? How many seconds is a billion? And how many seconds is a trillion to represent just how crazy um, like that jump is? Like people think, obviously, it's a lot of money either way. But like, let me let, do you guys know about this? Uh, no let's do a guess well i guess we could do it on close to the pin but let's do a mini closest to the pin that's not going to count for anything we're just going to do it with us right here let's just should we do it. the answers from the one before Frankie. quick what do you oh mean? yeah the oh, yeah, english sure. players thing yeah, yeah read real those quick. real quick trent was eight dan six Riggs five alex seven i'm i'm international i'm not on the home team this uh this time. yeah your your best hope is that erling holland scores five goals for man city good all right, the so Nor- here, the Norwegian we'll Targaryen. This, this is doing it. How many days in a million seconds? <laughs> I know that. I know that five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes is a year. Now my brain because hurts. of rent. My brain. Hurts. You guys never seen you guys that that, no, that I got nothing. I got to you guys? I'm just trying to do math and try to think about this real quick. How I many song, days right? are in a million yeah, seconds? I get it. How many days are in a million seconds? Uh, <laughs> I, wait, wait. I'm, I think you're gonna double the minutes. I, I don't Dan's, know. Dan's doing full Dan, mental math. I can just tell you guys we don't have to math. guess, but uh, is it a week? I'm gonna call it a week. Okay. No, dude. No, 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 like, no, no, no. It's no, gotta no, be no. like a month or something. No, because a million hours no. would be two years. So then you divide that by sixty. It's it's twenty something days. Twenty six day. Twenty eight okay. days. I might be I might be a zero off. Bush what? gravy train. Set a month. So. Oh, uh, days. oh no 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 no! It's it's the other way. You have to multiply it. Just say a number. We can't. I'm, we're not gonna I'm, sit I'm, here. Just say a number. Twelve days. A million seconds okay. is twelve days. I was pretty. All right. I was the closest. You guys were saying months over there. You guys were out to lunch. What yeah. is <laughs> what is what is a billion seconds? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You just we don't Fuck have to go off. crazy, but it's just Wait, twelve days. times a thousand. No, dude. No, dude. No, dude. It's time. Yes, like- a million times a thousand is a billion. Listen, I don't so know how just, the math works, but it's not- twelve thousand. It's tw- twelve thousand days. Oh wait, is it twelve thousand days? <laughs> That'd be great if it is. Well, the, the it's thirty six years <laughs> okay, it's or it's thirty one yeah. years. Okay, so thirty one years. So thirty one times three sixty five. What is it, Bush? I, I thought you were doing it right now. <laughs> it's eleven thousand three hundred. <laughs> okay, all right. So you were right. Yes. Wow. That is. Wait, how many years? But how it's crazy is that? A billion seconds is 31 years, you said? Yes. <laughs> and a million seconds is 12 days. We like, think about the difference of dollars, that. guys. We got to get a billion dollars. Think about how much money that is right now. And then a trillion, a trillion seconds is 31,000 years. So it's just like... 31,000? Yes. Are there already trillionaires? Is, there, is someone crossed that, that mark yet or no? I don't think no? so. Probably uh, Mr. Putin. I think... I would I would I guess think, that he is. Yeah, that's un- true. Unreported, Dan. Unreported. MBS. Yeah. MBS. Mm-hmm. I think like no even one. like Bezos and Buffett and Musk, they're at like the highest is like three hundred billion. Yeah, I think two forty. Right. Yeah. Two forty according to Google. Google's got Google's big AI now. Dude, you guys notice that? Like mm-hmm. when you Google AI something, review. it's just AI now. It's crazy. I wonder if that is like fucked up the like SEO industry. You know what I mean? Because that was always like, I, you know, there was like these Ask Jeeves or whatever these websites were that were just clowning on Google traffic. Now Google just cut them all out. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm sorry. I derailed uh, close to the pit. We got one more. No, that was it, right? No, that was it. it. Yeah. All right. That was that's it. it. That, that was, was it. it. That's all she wrote. All right. Um, we got a couple from the gallery to do here. We should talk we, about the creator classic, though. We should. We should. If you guys so, want to talk about that. We touched on Dan, it a little bit. Dan is a commentator. Yes, that is correct. I am going to be doing sideline or 
on course, similar role to what I was doing. Uh, I've done it a few times now. I did it with BBC last week. I've done it, you know, KFT. I'm getting a little, getting a little experience in the broadcasting game. But you know, Fra- I think I talked to Frankie a lot about it. His his take was like, are we just doing an extension of like? He, so George and Wesley are playing, who are professional golfers. Yeah. And so it's like at a certain. So are we doing like a professional golf tournament, or are we doing like a an entertainment product? And and there's no better example there's no better opportunity to do the hypothetical that we've always talked about which is what would a very average person like an average golfer shoot in a pga tour setup and and those six no, no one of the 16 that they have right now is there's no pace car right that was my i tweeted a couple jokes about yesterday i think it's a great event like i'm i'm thrilled that dan's doing it i think it's huge for the internet golf world that the pga tour is clearly getting involved they see the momentum of it i think that's fantastic my only beef with it is a little bit what Dan and I'm sure Frankie is saying where it's if you're going to have like an internet golf creator classic, let's show the whole wide range of it. Like the way it is now is it's basically your scratch or better, or you're going to be right around there because they want it to be competitive, I guess. I don't, but I don't know what you win if you win the whole thing. And yeah, the Brian bros are in it. So they're professional golfers. I'm, I would imagine they're going to likely win the event. So if you're trying to showcase the world of internet golf, and it's a little probably sour grapes because we I would like to be involved in, in a certain way where it's like, show everything. You got guys who are going to make birdies and pars and bogeys, but also have the guys who could make quadruple bogey on a hole. Like, I think that like the, the essence of Internet golf is entertainment that it's not about how well you play, who's going to win in a tournament of all of these people. It's it's the entertainment value. And I think you get that as you have a wider berth of skill levels is it's the entry isn't you're a really good golfer now you can be a really good golfer and that stuff is really interesting to watch there's people involved in the creator classic who are very good golfers they're youtube golfers they get tons of views because it's like wow look how good this guy who isn't a professional golfer he just plays golf on the internet but i also think you can widen it and have it be a true representation of internet golf has people out there who through nine holes will put up a 60 yeah, I agree with that. And I think, look, it's a great start. I think it's a really good idea overall. It's very cool that the tour embraced it Wednesday afternoon of a tournament, which even at majors, like people, the players have pretty much wind down. They're chilling. They're geared up for the next day. So the course is there. It's ready to be used. So it's overall, it's a great idea. I do, I do agree with it where it's like, I think that if you look at it, it's like the, the most obvious reason that we maybe got left off originally is like, our brand is not playing good golf. But don't get me wrong. Frankie is currently in the stretch where he's playing very solid golf. But like you said, I mean, <laughs> they're going up against guys that play professional golf. Wesley Bryant's one. Wesley PGA. finished solo second. He finished solo second in a PJ Tour event this year. Yeah. So and that's uh, so yeah. I think that the 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 you know the the reasoning, if you will, would be like, oh no, like yeah, sure, those guys are definitely a big part of the ecosystem when it comes to YouTube golf. But like. This is sort of, it's not like they've got Bobby Fairways out there. They've got Fat Perez from their group. And it's not like, yeah. you know, and so I get that. But I'm to your point, Trent, where it's like, okay, but it's if this is just a tournament to see who's like the best of the creators, we know who the best of the creators are. It's the guy that finished second in a PJ tournament this year. <laughs> right. Like, we know that. So I thought it did come off like a little bit in between. Like you're saying, where like, there could be a bunch of different storylines where it's like, yes, obviously, who wants to win the creator classic? That's big. And Garrett Clark, he could maybe give it a run, but I, these guys are pros, so he probably won't, whatever. But also, you could have the storyline of, like, is Mac Boucher going to be out there carving it around trees? I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's doing that more than he's trying to, like, win and post the lowest score. And then you could have the storyline of, like, we got Trent Ryan, who is, like, the everyman fucking golfer, did the break in 100, did break in 90 series. Like, what is he actually going to shoot over nine holes at a PGA Tour course hours before they start the PGA Tour event? That's a great storyline that I think somehow got skipped over because there was this narrative that, no, no, it's like the best players from the creator world, where, again, I don't think that that storyline is that intriguing because we know who the best. There's two guys that play professional golf on the PGA Tour. <laughs> it's like they're the best. Right, right. It does seem they, they kind of took the format of the PGA Tour where it's every week, week in and week out, who's the best player and who's going to win these tournaments. That You can't apply that than to the YouTube golf world because that's not really what it is. It's that's not the goal of it. It's it's all of these different storylines. It is it's me trying to get us, you know, break a certain number. It's Bobby Fairways making a hole in one. It's like there's so many different ways to go about it. So 
No, that was my only beef with it was they basically applied the PJ Tour format to a world that doesn't really do that at all. Right, and it made sense for the queue at Myrtle Beach, right? Because like there was a carrot at the end. Yes, it was like you're gonna you're gonna play in a PGA Tour event, and like you don't want to make a mockery of like the qualification. There's no rules with this. There's no rule. There's no there's no thing at the end. Right. I need to see Trent play the 15th hole at East Lake. It's that par three. That's 220, like and basically an island Holes green. Are like I, <laughs> I, I, Trent, you're hitting you're hitting D stick on that hole. Oh yeah, I, for I, sure. I want to see what I want to see what. And there's no. Too, I mean, it's 220. I'm trying to carve one in there. So, and, I mean, what do you? That hole is insane. And Riggs made a good point where it's like, this is the beginning of all this. We are at the tip of the iceberg and like with the PJ tour getting involved and like these big broadcast getting involved and like, so I, I don't want to stop my feet too much because again, it's just the beginning, like going forward, who knows what they can make the format and who knows who's going to be included. I was just saying like, I, I think it feels like they planned it without a voice from the world in the room. Yeah. I think so. And, and, um, look, we've dealt with the tour for years and years and years. We're as good right now with the PGA tour as we've ever been, but they are still in a lot of cases, very, 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 very difficult to deal with. And I have to assume to get the approval process, maybe it was included that like hey, the tour was probably pushing back on something like, we don't want this to be a shit show. We want this to be in line with our brand, which is excellence sure. in golf. And so there's a lot of moving pieces. I'm sure they probably try to do the best that they can, but it would have been impossible for us not to highlight the fact that we're we're snubbed. We're like left off. It's like we're not. What are we gonna not fucking say something? It's like of course right. I tweeted something. yesterday. It's hard not to come off as sour grapes, but it, and it, and it it is and it isn't. I just I just think it's not representative of kind of what it is. But there is a chance we're involved in it in some way. Um, now I know we might have. There's a there's might be some filming. Um, that we were going to do that might get in the way of that, but we might be out there. We might not. I don't really know where it stands right now, but I don't think that filming is happening. Okay, we can. Talk. I mean, I the, the 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 roller coaster ride of this of this process has been something else. I, love, so I wish hit, Brendan was we hit people. With I a wish little, Brendan with a, was on. We hit people with a little thing. I they wish just Brendan don't know what on. they're talking about. We can't talk about it. So it's so not, if yeah, we we won't not talk about it. But if that history, doesn't but... happen, there's a chance we'll be. Um, doing something at the creator classic yeah there's talks there's talks it's not uh it's not unbeknownst there's like a change.org petition going on to get us somehow involved so there and chad mom who's awesome who dan knows very well he is you know behind um this new group that's sort of spearheading a lot of this he's also behind full swing on netflix he's a golf nut i've i uh i did the when we went to um pebble beach last year and played uh the hay to raise a bunch of money for youth on course spent a bunch of time with chad and he's fucking awesome he's just everything he's a huge fan of the show he's a huge fan of what we do i actually went back and looked at like dms he's dm me years and years and years ago about how big of a fan of the show he is so he gets it and we've been talking with him so who knows there could be some capacity there could not be but it'd be you're right it'd be wild for us not to talk about the creator classic which like we've been doing the creator thing for as long as anybody on earth so it'd be weird for us not to at least mention like this thing's occurring and you know there were people talking about the fact that we originally weren't involved in it so we'll see what happens dan's involved dan's a commentator yeah. which is great is. and jake marsh jake marsh jake is marsh the play is on, on there play. that's true jake marsh jake marsh is on there he uh you know come a long way from the corn fairy tour broadcast last year at the Glen club so jake marsh is on it so uh so yeah and that's coming up fast fucking east lake's gonna be here fast and then once yeah. east lake's here golf season's over and it's football season which is that's just how Kurt that just happened we're just there now like that's a Wild. thing I love you know being in this world where we do golf 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 like before before golf digest I worked at Sports Illustrated in a very general role where I would basically have to blog about like anything that happened in in sports and it just ruins sports because anytime something happens you're like oh fuck like I got a blog or do something about this it's so nice now that like Football season, I can and soccer season, I can just be a pure fan. Yep. I can fire off takes and not worry about having to ask the guy to come on the podcast. Like it's just a great experience. <laughs> it is. It's very nice. I uh, yeah, I love the fall. I will say these last two days in Boston, there was a fall crisp in the air in the mornings and in the evening time, and everybody could feel it. Everybody was commenting on it. You're up here in New England. It was like in the low 60s maybe in the morning when people showed up to the golf course there's a misty dew on top of the grass 
and it just had that like football's right around the corner. This for me for the first half of my life was like when you would start to feel hockey season was creeping in. Like there's, uh, we're here right now um, looking at Gillette Stadium. It's right there. And there's training camp is going on. People have like Ooh. showed up for training camp the last couple days. And there's like a whisper in the air that it's fall. With the, you know, they say winter's coming and fall is coming. And I do think that a lot of people that are, that are either us or that are listeners of this show are fall type of people. We prefer just autumn leaves, crispy air, hoodies and pants out there instead of sweating your dick off and going through 10 gloves. And the summer's great. You look forward to it all year, especially you live in a place that has a bad winter. But we're made for the fall, baby. That's kind of yeah. where we thrive. And it's coming. It's almost here. Yeah, I'm a hoodie guy. I, hoodie weather, college football, chili, clam chowder. Probably shouldn't move to Florida then. No, I know. But it's, you know, I can... I can get a taste, but I can go visit home. I can totally. visit. That's the thing. I want my my baseline to be really nice, and then if I if I want yeah, yeah. snow or if I want fall, I can go visit for a few days. But it doesn't have to yeah, be my can, standard. Cosplay, cosplay a midwestern. That's for a right. Week. That's right. <laughs> yes, we traveled. We were talking about this over the last weekend, and it was like I I'm a big fan of the seasons as well. I've always said that. Never. It's like, man, I really love the seasons, but. When you're standing there in Arizona and it's like 71 degrees on like January 11th and it's negative five and snowing in Boston, you're like, well, I, this season that I'm witnessing right now is just better than that season. I don't care. I get like the one thing you do miss is those crisp fall mornings and all that. So I can understand that part. But Trent, let me tell you, it's you really forget about loving the seasons when it's just beautiful out every morning and everybody you see is happy and in a good mood all the well, time. Yeah, I was having this conversation, I think, with Alex Bush when I was kind of telling him that I might move down there. And he's like, yeah, I, I, you know, I love the snow. I love the wintertime. And I was like, that's Stockholm Syndrome. You, you have fallen mm-hmm. in love and been brainwashed by your captors. They, mm-hmm. they, you, don't, you say that because you, it's your reality. And I'd had that forever. And I do think it's important. Like I, Growing up in Iowa, I think it was important to go through like, whatever, 25 winters. I think, that's, I think that, that is like, it's a life experience. And I learned from that. And I know what it is. But to say that I like love it and I wouldn't move anywhere else because of that, you you have been brainwashed by the seasons. Yeah, by big. This seasons. is this is when I would start to get the ex. This is this is in the time of the year when in when I lived in New York, I'd start to get the existential dread because the golf courses were going to close in like a month and a half. That really fucked me up in New York because like playing golf is such a huge part of my life, and also just it's something that that kills the time. You know, yeah. and in New York, I just remember in those like November days where it's like it's not really snowy out. You don't, and, and it's just too cold to play golf. Right? What the fuck am I going to do on Saturday? And the answer is drink. It also hasn't snowed in New York in like three years. <laughs> is that crazy. right, That's dude? Crazy. I, I mean, maybe I missed it. I mean, maybe there's been flurries here and there, but there hasn't been like a snowstorm in New York City. I feel like in years, it's always it's nowadays it's like forty degrees and gray. It's a weird yeah. winter gross one of our og golf videos people forget greater classic we're we're the ogs was me and trent daddy went to a, a blizzard in the middle of Times square and we played like a little nine hole uh makeup golf course with a tennis ball a bunch of golf clubs our boy robbie fox who was our yep. uh filmographer and editor and producer at the time he's got like what do you call it raynards or whatever where he's, he's got, got rainoids rainoids so his fingers basically fell off we we're out there in the middle of a blizzard and that was when the Time Magazine photographer happened to take a photo of like, I think I was in the middle of my backswing in Times Square hitting a tennis yep. ball, blizzard, Trent Daddy standing next to me like he was getting ready to tee off next. And we went to bed at like four in the morning because that's what time the blizzard came in. And we woke up at like 11 sleeping in and we were everywhere. everywhere. The photo was fucking everywhere. And then we ended yep. up putting out this video of us playing golf. And it was, it was a blizzard. That was a serious fucking blizzard. Almost killed Robbie Fox. That was a re- yeah, that was a real blizzard. Have not had one of those in a long time in the city. What if the golf ball you're playing isn't the number one golf ball for you? Meet the all new TP5 and TP5X from TaylorMade. TaylorMade presents from the gallery. They love doing that and they love creating great golf balls. That'll be the number one ball for you. Whether you prefer the softest five layer tour ball, the TP5, or the fastest, which is now. Half a club longer in the TP5X, you'll be playing a golf ball that performs just like it was built for you, boys. 
Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going down to TaylorMade next week. Uh, every time I go to the kingdom, I just get really energized about what they're working on down there. You know, they're, they've got stuff planned for many, many years down the road. And I've also, I'm a big TP5X picks guy now. I've switched full time to the picks ball because wow. I just like, I just like the no seeing that it's my ball. Yeah. Right. Like when it, a ball is in the fairway and it's like, is that mine? And then you just see all the different designs on it and you're like, it's mine and it performs incredibly well. So I'm, I'm really happy with my TV5X picks right now. I agree with that. It is nice. I like, I was rocking the uh, Pac-Man balls for a while there. I'm getting oh, down me too. to my, oh, so good. My last sleeve, I got a fresh sleeve. I might use those this week and just cause it's, it's fun, but you're right. You go up there and somebody walks over to a ball. Maybe it's in the right rough and they look at it. And either like Pac-Man, like that. Who else is using a Pac-Man ball? It's, gotta, yeah. it's just got to be me. It's, it's a, that's got, me, yeah. I, I, I still got Pac-Man the Adirondack like ones like, from, from the U.S. Open. My golf ball. Uh, head over to TaylorMadeGolf.com today to find the number one ball for you. That is TaylorMadeGolf.com. One of the from the galleries was actually from a guy, Michael, who said if you were a PGA Tour player, where would you make your home and what course would you get a membership at? Which I think we covered at the very beginning of the trip, which, which or the very, very beginning. Well, of no, the show. I disagree. I disagree. I would not be a Jupiter guy. I'm a West coast guy. I would stay in Los Angeles, California. Okay. And this is, this drives people crazy because it always bothers me when like Max Homa and Colin Morikawa, they talk about how much they bleed LA and then you left and it's like all taxes. It's like, you think there's no rich people who live in California? Do you think you invented money and how to like deal with taxes? So if I was a PGA Tour player, I'd stay in my very house right now. I'll tell you that much. Who? Where, if we were to look, like who? Who's in LA? Arizona is the real answer. Arizona, but like who? Yeah, who does any? Who lives in San Diego? Who lives in LA? Are there professional golfers? Xander? Not really. Not does Xander anymore. live in LA? I mean, not San no. Diego. Xander moved to Jupiter. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he lived in San Diego. Yeah, still. I mean. There is like oh, I, uh, Phil had a place here for a while, but he's in. I think he's in Florida now. Uh, like, I think Brendan Steele lives in San Diego, but no, it's not. It's not really a thing at all. There's also an element of the travel to it. Like, if you're living in L.A., obviously taxes. People harp on that a lot, but also, like, that's outside of the first month of the season. That's really far from most stuff that you go to. Yeah, that's true. I guess I mean if I if I had to choose between, I guess the meccas are sort of like Vegas, uh, Arizona, Dallas, and Florida. I would choose Arizona. I quite like Arizona. I I, I like it down there. Yeah, I guess when I said we covered at the beginning of the show, I I didn't mean that we would all go to Jupiter. I actually meant that I think we're almost not that dissimilar and can choose and have chosen where we want to go. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like, right. Yeah, we've done. Dude, it. I, yeah. I was saying that to somebody. And you guys, you I feel like you guys, I mean, Dan, you're from LA Riggs. I feel like you were pretty set on Scottsdale. I personally um, felt paralyzed by choice. Like I, I almost would have preferred, I'm glad I can choose. I'm glad we have put ourselves in a position where we can choose, but having, being able to choose pretty much wherever you want is almost being like, I don't know where to go. Yes. I, yeah, I, I, I actually very much agree with that. I, I kind of fell upon scottsdale to be honest with you it was it was the second half of 2020 covid was coming back right so remember like the summertime it kind of it kind of air quotes went away there was outdoor seating everywhere and everybody was panicking in the northeast being like fall's coming when the fall comes all that outdoor seating is going to condense to indoors covid's going to spread again it's not going to be good mine and lurch's lease was up at the end of august that year and we were like dude we're not going to renew a lease so i was like i don't have anywhere to live and then it was Josh Isner and our great friend Todd Martin, the Silver Fox from Peter Millar, who were like, dude, why don't you come to Scottsdale, do a winter lease? So I did. I just did a six-month lease. I was like, I'll ride out this COVID thing, and then we'll figure it out from there. Well, then we were never really called back to the office, and I really liked Arizona. So I was like, fuck it. I'll stay. And now it's been four years. I bought a place, and I love Arizona. So it was a little bit like I was a little bit lucky, and if anything— I'll probably move back to St. Louis before I would move anywhere else where I would do like winters in Arizona and then go back to the St. Louis area because I've got my nephew, my niece, my friends, my family are a lot there. So I would probably do that before I would go anywhere else. But I don't know that I'll ever not do four months of the year, if you call it that, of the wintertime. So you got in Arizona, Arizona over over Pinehurst. That's that's kind of that's like home for you. You you consider yourself you live in Arizona. Yeah, I think Pinehurst is just more of um like a destination for me where like I go with friends 
to have fun just because Pinehurst is at its core. I know people go there. It's a resort, but it's like also a retirement town and I'm a single guy. So it's like, I'm going to go there and on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, there is nothing going on. And that's really nice at at times. But like, eventually I'm just like, I got to get some kind of action. I got nothing going on. Yeah. That's, yeah, you don't have you don't have that issue with Scottsdale, which is basically mini Las Vegas at this point. <laughs> yeah, Scottsdale's Scottsdale is like way up it, there. people love Scottsdale. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, but I thought that was a good question, and and like I said, we kind of talked about it at the beginning, and then the more I did think about it, I was like, we're not in terms of pure lifestyle, we're not that dissimilar from those guys. <laughs> it's like we literally fly places to film golf stuff, and we usually fly and meet each other, or go to big golf events, and then we return to our own place where. It's like, for me, I film a lot of my own golf stuff, whether it's like the little social clips, whatever. So it's like being in Arizona, it's nice to do that. But we've, to a smaller degree, all done that. <laughs> and like chosen where yeah. we want to live. It's true. Um, all right. All right. Uh, that's it for the week. We got, uh, when we come back, we will have uh, the first playoff event to react to and to respond to. Maybe we'll have some updates on the Creator Classic situation and some involvement, but Dan's involved no matter what. Uh, Frankie will be back from his vacation, so I'm her- sure we'll hear all about Ireland. His, he's a great Instagram story picture poster, and he was doing a great job all week long. Uh, so it was very fun to follow. And happy birthday. Happy birthday to Frank Borelli III. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to Frank Borelli. 31, I think. Is that 31? Is? I believe that's correct. Oh, yep. man. Oh, that's, he's getting up that, there. 31, and we can finish up because we've been going long. But 31 is the one that hurt me. 30 didn't really hurt more me. than 30 30 yes. didn't hurt me 30 was like oh i'm 30 now and it's like oh that's like it's got like a bit of like uh it's got a feel to it where you're like wow i've entered a new phase of my life and then you turn 31 and you're like now i'm just in my 30s <laughs> the years just keep on fucking going you're right? just ticking them off for no reason at 31 you know what i'm saying like nothing yeah it's not monumental it's like fuck me we're just adding to this number right now for no reason no gain there's no 30s great 30 you turn the clock and you're like oh i was dreading this for a decade and it's fine i'm just 30 it's cool uh, i'm 30 in december <sighs> wow right. wow yeah Jeez. big one um what is it are you around uh hanukkah hanukkah is that when your birthday's mm-hmm. around yeah typically yeah, my my birthday is uh the week one week before christmas every year so it's always right in the middle of uh nine presents? right in the middle of the holiday season you get nine presents dan yeah no, I, you no one actually gets eight presents anymore. That's 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 big Hanukkah trying to trying to keep up with big Christmas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah, like we canceled that. We're out on that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, fun show. Thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks everybody for listening. Um, we'll be back next week on Tuesday per usual. We'll have the whole squad hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.